spacecraft operation manager has to coordinate a team of engineers and technicians uh, to ensure that uh, the spacecraft uh, is okay to operate the spacecraft, uh, basically to fly the spacecraft. For Herschel it was 12 years uh, development on ground, uh, up to the uh, launch, up to the liftoff. This is the most exciting moment, really. So separation, the first signal coming down to ground, verifying that the telecommands can be received, and then we start operating the spacecraft. We switch it on, yeah, bit by bit, uh, prepared for operations for the final goal to do the scientific measurements. The data are being routed from the spacecraft through our ground segment, through our antennas, through ESOC, to the establishments where it is needed. And so finally, that is something we always have to keep in mind, uh, we have to serve our customers, and our customers, uh, specifically in my division, are, uh, is the science community. As far as I can remember back, I was interested in, uh, in, uh, in space adventures. Uh, you can imagine like uh, a little boy yeah, uh, reading science fiction books, and uh, that was the case. So it was out of question to do something else. So I was following this up quite from the beginning. So after I finished school, I went to the university in Berlin, and there I studied uh, aeronautics and space engineering. And after that, I applied uh, for a job uh, in the uh, Spacecraft Operations Center here in Darmstadt, and uh, I got it, so I ended up here. Uh, flexibility is there, yeah, and, and uh, you have to take it as an advantage, yeah, because uh, I, mean, I never regretted the time I spent in Madrid. For two and a half years, we were operating the Infrared Space Observatory in Madrid. And uh, Spain is a great country. You, you learn about um, uh, living in a, in, a, in a different environment, a completely different culture of another European country. And uh, you're, afterwards, you really realize uh, that uh, you're even more open-minded yeah, to, towards different nationalities, towards different opinions. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun working here. So here in ESOC, uh, we work project-oriented, so we work on a project. And I was able to join quite early when it was in the definition phase. So uh, during that time, we in ESOC contribute by um, attending reviews and by bringing in our knowledge about what a spacecraft needs to be operated. How does it fit into our existing ground segment and so on and so forth. And uh, then uh, this phase uh, goes on in a more, for us, more hands-on phase. Uh, we have to develop a, uh, the tools. We have to develop a mission control tool. We have to develop a simulator. So let's say three, two months before the launch, we go in a, some sort of training campaign, simulation campaign, uh, where we actually really mimic all the situations you can face after liftoff, after, after separation, or for specific uh, uh, operations which needs to be done, like a maneuver to bring the spacecraft into the final orbit. And uh, this is very intensive. Uh, starts uh, with normal situations and then being topped up with contingency situations. So we have an evil simulations officer who actually implements failures in the simulator and we see it on our displays and we have to react. We have to have the existing procedures, recovery procedures, and then we have to react to bring the spacecraft back on track. And this finally ends up uh, in the climax, which is the launch itself. It was very funny because I'm, I'm, I invited them also for the launch of my last project. Uh, family could be sitting in the, in the back of the, of, the, of the control room, so in the, in the briefing room, which is being separated by class. And uh, I also had the idea, oh, my kids would be very excited, father is doing, but for them it's normal. So actually my little daughter watched for five years this, and she, she fell asleep and she started snoring. Everybody was laughing, so <laughs> just doing the launch. Mm -hmm.